Welcome to this edition of Christian Connections. I'm Marlon Paley, sitting in for Ganem Han uh, uh, on this edition, and uh, together uh, with Bob Blancato and uh, Lee Aveling, uh, we're going to bring you some really good news. Uh, good news about Jesus soon coming, good news about his testimony, and good news through song and prayer and, and message. Uh, we've got a, a whole bunch lined up uh, for you today, and uh, uh, we're going to be talking with Bob Blancato, uh, and we're all going to be talking to Lee Aveling. And Lee, uh, what are you going to feature tonight? Some interesting things, Marlon. Um, <clears throat> it's amazing how many people get addicted to substances such as alcohol, drugs, prescription illegal drugs, you name it. And we're going to be exploring that a little bit. And I'll be talking uh, with one of uh, our leading men here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network, uh, Dr. David Taylor, who is going to uh, bring us some very insightful message. Uh, Dr. Taylor, what are you going to share with us? What's the title of your message? I want to look at one thankful person. And since we're getting near Thanksgiving, November, are we thankful for one thankful person tonight? Well, I'll tell you what, I am thankful to be here because the Lord is merciful. He has saved me from my sins. He has given me hope of everlasting life. And that's what this ministry is all about. Uh, we celebrate that in word and in song. Here's Bob Blancato to introduce our music, but first he's got a special message that you need to pay attention to. Bob? A little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, next week on Christian Connections, well, we're not gonna be on next week. That's the gist of the message because we have our fall special uh, starting on Sunday, October 28th at 6 p.m., continuing for five nights until uh, November 1st. Uh, again, this is 8 p.m., excuse me, 6 p.m. Pacific time. We will be featuring John Bradshaw, the speaker and director of uh, It Is Written. He'll be our special guest. <clears throat> and uh, I think uh, just about all of you, uh, if not uh, <laughs> a good number of you know, the It Is Written television show, but there's also a ministry involved as well. Uh, Pastor Bradshaw will be talking about, in general, Christ's righteousness. But every night we'll also be having music and interesting discussions, so I hope you'll join us. Our music tonight, now on to the part that uh, I think many are looking forward to. Michael Klein is uh, with us, a guitarist extraordinaire. Uh, his first rendition will be Your Hands and vocal accompaniment by Ray Ann Ferris. wasn't there and I have asked a thousand ways that you would take my pain away you would take my pain away I am trying to understand how to walk this weary that crooked lie oh lord before these feet of mine oh lord before these feet of mine when my world is shaking heaven stands when things 
strive Yeah, one day you will set all things right When my world is shaking Heaven stands When my heart is breaking I never leave your hands Your hands Your hands that shape the world Are holding me They hold me still Your hands that shape the world Are holding me They hold me still When my world is shaking Heaven stands When my heart I never leave you when my world is shaking. Heaven stands when my heart is breaking. I never leave. I country, gospel, and a little bit of folk in there too. Michael Klein <coughs> with uh, Ray Ann Ferris. Thank you so much for that wonderful song. You know, I think the, the best known version of that song is J.J. Uh, Heller, and uh, that wasn't too far apart from, uh, from what I could hear. And uh, all of this uh, comes because of viewers like you who support this ministry. And before we get too far into the program, I want to give my sincere and our sincere thank you from LLBN. Marlon? Well, Bob, I, I have to agree with you fully. I mean, those melodious notes are still uh, sticking in my ear. And, uh, you know, you should, if it sounds good on your television, you should have been here to hear it live. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you have that opportunity to see Christian Connections live once a month. Uh, if you need uh, more information, just call uh, Jay Hughes at the number on the screen, and uh, he will uh, tell you all about it and get you some tickets uh, so that you can enjoy this music and message firsthand here at the studios of the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Well, right now, uh, Lee has a, a special guest uh, and a special testimony for you here on Christian Connections, Lee. Thank you, Marlon. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about a topic that is a little bit uncomfortable. In fact, a big bit uncomfortable for a lot of people. Tim Mattingly, you, had, you work at the Drug Alternative Program. Tell our viewers what that is. Well, the Drug Alternative Program is a 18-month residential um, faith-based drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. And how did you come to be involved there? Well, I was looking for a change in my life. Mm. Um, I myself was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Okay. Um, I knew that in order for me to change those things that mm. it was going to take the Lord. I needed God. And so yeah. I researched the program on the internet Mm -hmm. um, a few Christian faith-based programs came up, but Drug Alternative Program was the best one for me. All right. Share with our viewers a little bit about um, addiction. It's a topic that is kind of can have a lot of shame because it impacts families. In fact, um, addicts can be professional people. They can be blue-collar workers. They can be kids. They can be anybody, even old people. You know, become addicts. What do you think's behind addiction, Tim? Well, first and foremost, you know, I believe that addiction is, you know, is a way for the enemy, you know, to mm -hmm. enter our lives. And, you know, Jesus says that, you know, he came for those who are sick mm -hmm. and um, those who are in need of a physician. Mm -hmm. And, you know, drug addiction is an illness. It's mm -hmm. something that you know, affects not just the addict, but those around, as you said. Mm. And so, 
you know, these kind of ministries and programs, they're so necessary, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, the program, Drug Alternative Program, has saved my life. Wonderful. It's interesting how um, <clears throat> this, there seems to be a pattern with addicts. Um, Marlon, I don't know whether you've noticed that as well, and Dr. Taylor, but um, a lot of the addicts I've worked with and I've, you know, heard their stories, their families weren't always that supportive of them. Now, there's a lot of exceptions. I mean, some people have come from wonderful families and still become addicts. But by far and large, a lot of people had holes inside their emotions. Um, maybe dad wasn't there for them when they were little. Um, one of the things that was very common, I found, is that dad never really was involved with the kids. Mum might not be that involved as well. There's an old saying that you put your kids in daycare, parents say, I'll put you in elder care down the road. But um, <clears throat> sometimes when kids are neglected, there's a wound inside. And when they're in a crowd, they don't feel they fit in. Then they start using a drug or drinking. Suddenly they fit in. Share a little bit about that, Tim. Well, you know, there are many aspects mm -hmm. to drug addiction. Um, you've named a few, you know, mm -hmm. um, childhood, upbringing, circumstances, environment plays mm -hmm. a big role. Um, there are many different things, you know, and, and what's unique about this is that, you know, each one is different, you know, yes. each one is different. And so, you know, it's kind of an individual case by case basis. It's, right. it's very difficult to try to lump them all together and say that this is the cause or that is the cause of drug addiction or right. alcohol abuse, you know, but there are many things that play a part. And, you know, for me personally, I can speak that I had a void. I had a void that I was trying to fill. And before addiction came many other things, you know, money, jobs, friendships. I was looking to fill this void that I had in many different areas of my life. Mm -hmm. And I found that the only thing that I was able to fill that void with was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What a story. You know, it's interesting how <clears throat> the void can be there. And a lot of the time, addicts, you know, medicate to be able to feel like they fit in. You know, Marlon, they did some research with a bunch of rats. Now, rats are not people. But they put these rats in a confinement and they gave them a choice between water and alcohol. And after a few days, they got lonely and started using alcohol. Mm. They did that for 60 days. They then tried an experiment, and they put the rats in with other friendly rats in an environment that rats choose. You know, a lot of tunnels and things that they can romp and run around. You know how many rats, they, they gave them a choice between alcohol and, and drugs. You know how many rats took alcohol? Mm. None. <clears throat> When they were in a social setting feeling fulfilled, they didn't need to use. And <clears throat> let's kind of talk a little bit about how Jesus tends to fill the void along with people when you know how to connect. How does that work for you? Well, I have found in my life that the church mm -hmm. and the fellowship with like-minded believers mm -hmm. has really helped me to stay sober. You know, getting sober is one thing. You know, mm -hmm. someone who's addicted to drugs and alcohol, they need certain things to get off the drugs and alcohol, yeah. Yeah. to get away from the environment, and to be placed into a new environment. Yes. And then once you come to that new environment, you know, at, at the DAP program, we mm -hmm. keep the Sabbath. We go to church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we fellowship. We have worship every morning together. And so it helps build a faith and a foundation, and then it helps to continue to keep you sober, to go mm -hmm. to church and to pray mm -hmm. and to have a relationship with Christ. And you also have a community to build on. Absolutely. Yeah. Isolation can be a recipe for disaster for addicts. Yes. Why is that so? Well, a lot of times, you know, addicts or alcoholics, they have issues within, you know, mm -hmm. not feeling um, like they measure up, you know, different things that when you're with people, you know, when you get outside of self mm -hmm. and you can be of service and you can be around others mm -hmm. and you're not always thinking about yourself and in your thoughts, mm -hmm. it helps. You know, when you're isolated and by yourself, there's only you to think about, to worry about, you know, mm -hmm. and you're 
addicts and alcoholics, we tend to overthink things. And so it's good to be around others so that we can be with others and bounce things off of other people. Right. Now, <clears throat> addiction can be very secretive. Maybe one of our viewers can identify with this. Maybe you haven't told anybody. Maybe you're struggling with it. It can be physicians. It can be pharmacists. I know that when I worked at the alcohol and drug um, facility down the road here, um, the other addicts thought the pharmacist was in the candy store because <laughs> they had access to all these drugs. But I don't care what the profession is. We've even had judges, you know, who were addicts. What's the important thing to do? Because the first thing to do, I guess, is admit it. But how do you admit it when it's so secretive and you don't know what to, say, what to do? Well, you know, a lot of times, um, and, and it's sad to say, but I've experienced mm. that addicts and alcoholics, they need to reach rock bottom. They need to reach a point where yes. they have had enough. Because yes. families, mm. friends, doctors, people can reach out and try mm. to help you, but mm. until we ourselves want the help, yes. it doesn't work. And so it's a difficult thing, but you know, eventually we have to reach the point where we want to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes it easier to come to someone and say that you need the help. So families sometimes have to practice tough love. Um, some families enable their kids and spouses to use. And they buy alcohol for them, they buy drugs for them. Um, <clears throat> and so there's not much impetus to give up. But when the families don't support it and hold you accountable, mm -hmm. and then if your work gets involved, suddenly your livelihood is in jeopardy, that can make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it, it is actually a term we use called enabling, mm -hmm. where families mm -hmm. will enable the addict you know, right. for so long. But once the enabling stops, that helps that person to reach that bottom and know that they need yeah. to get help for themselves. Now, in enabling families is not easy to stop because that's a family pattern. Mm -hmm. In the work that you've done and seen, how, do, how does somebody recognize you in that position? Well, it's very difficult, you know, mm. to um, deal with the families. You know, the families mm. sometimes become just as affected as the addict themselves. Yes. And so, you know, we always try to help them to understand that you mm. know they're only hurting their loved one, the mm. person that they care about. Yeah. And when you when you really are honest with them and you you you're forthright and you tell them you're harming the person you love, mm. then they start to really think about it. And and oftentimes mm. they come mm. to the decision. So tough love's important. I'll never forget the story of a guy who came home so drunk, he was hot and he was not really focusing on anything, and he took all his clothes off. His wife had locked the door. And so he, you know, went into a sleep, a drunken sleep, in the front yard and woke up when the sun was shining without any clothes. That really drew him to his senses that he needed to get some help. So sometimes tough love from the family, while it's hard to do, can be a lifesaver. Mm. Yeah. And it can, absolutely. Mm. And, you know, I just want to um, thank you for having us and having the opportunity to mm. speak about this because it is a problem, you know, and it's something mm. that, you know, we really need to address and allow the Lord to work and to help these souls because they are lost souls and they do need the help. So it's a wonderful thing that, that we're doing here and it's a good topic to speak about. Now, do you have to be a member of a particular church to, let's say you're addicted and you're wanting to get some help, how would somebody contact the drug alternative program. What would be the process to you know, get a hold of you? Well, we have um, an office number, which mm. is 909-783-1094, that you can contact us there, mm. as well as a website. Mm. And um, so if there's anyone who has any questions or someone you know mm. that needs to help, please contact us. Well, we're about out of time. We've been talking to Tim Mattingly, and thank you for all the information here. And once again, please, if you're suffering drug addiction, get help. There is help available. Marlon. Hmm. I want to thank you, Tim, uh, for, for your recovery and, and in your growth. Please hi, say hi to uh, Cliff and Freddie uh, for us. Absolutely. Will do.
All right. Well, Bob is uh, here to uh, share some information of the spa fall special. Yeah, that's fall special here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. It's coming up live next week. <laughs> Bob, what are we doing? Well, there may have been a number of viewers who joined us late, so I'd like to say one more time, Christian Connections will not be seen next Tuesday because we have a five-night special, live special, starting on Sunday, October 28th at uh, 6 p.m., that's Pacific time. Our guest uh, with Ganim Hanna and Marlon is going to be John Bradshaw, the speaker-director of It Is Written, both the television show and the ministry. He'll be, uh, in general, talking about Christ's righteousness, but we'll have a number of topics that uh, we'll be going through with him. And I'm sure you'll learn a lot and be inspired. He's, uh, he's quite a speaker, very dynamic, if uh, you haven't heard him. Christian Connections will return the following Tuesday, which is November 6th. So uh, we're not going away. We're just taking a little hiatus while we have our fall special coming on next Tuesday at this time. And now at this time, we have Michael Klein back and uh, his uh, guitar rendition of All in All, You Are My All in All. Thank you, Michael. You are my all in all. Very nice. And we'll see you again before the show ends. I had read that uh, that song was co-written by Mariah Carey, the popular singer, I believe. Yes. And she released it in 1998. So uh, beautiful rendition on the instrumental side. Thank you so much. And again, all this is made possible through our viewers, our loyal viewers who pray for us, and also uh, send their financial support. Thank you so much. Marlon? And thank you, Bob. You know, your uh, loyalty and faithfulness to this ministry is uh, much appreciated, especially at the uh, coming end of the year. Uh, this is uh, the time when many ministries uh, are made uh, or broken, and it's, uh, we're just so grateful that you are our audience. 
And right now, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce my friend and your friend, pastor to us all, uh, David Taylor, with uh, tonight's special message. Uh, Dr. Taylor. Thank you so much, and I'm glad to be here tonight. It's very special, Tim, hearing your testimony. What happens when we connect with Jesus Christ? And not only have you connected, but you're thankful. And Lee, I appreciate the interview, just how you went about it to let us know, even today, that connection is so vitally important. Now, I would just like to draw from a letter written to us by a doctor. Uh, his name was Luke. And Luke talks about one thankful person. This is October. We're getting into November, and that's Thanksgiving time. And I remember the many thanksgivings, and as you read the Bible, the love letter from Genesis to Revelation, you'll find thanksgiving is talked about often in the Word of God. It's very interesting. November 22, Thanksgiving. I'll eat with relatives down in Los Angeles, and many of us have places we are going or they are coming. And it was about 1620 in the United States they started Thanksgiving. Thanks to God for what he has done to us and for us. The corn, the pumpkins, the pumpkin pie, the turkey, all the nice vegetables that we would get. And over in Germany and in Japan, they celebrate Thanksgiving in October but it's thanks. And one thankful person. How does this all connect with Christian connections? Well, reading from Genesis to Revelation, Thanksgiving is mentioned 140 times in the Bible. And as I just gone through, I think of David. And David in Psalm says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless his holy name. David is saying, I'm thankful. He's a thankful man. And then I think of that teenager in Daniel 2. And in Daniel 6, he's now about 30 or 40. His name is Daniel. And Daniel tells us in Daniel 6, verse 10, Three times a day, he opened his Venetian blinds. He looked to Jerusalem, and he gave thanks to God. Oh, Daniel was grateful. And then I think of that little man, Paul, and I identify with him. And Paul, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, he says, In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So, Tim, in discovering Jesus Christ, you are grateful. And it means so much, and we get that strength. But tonight, I just want to focus in contextually. I want to look at our Lord and Savior himself, Jesus Christ. And uh, we, we, we receive a tremendous message from him. And he meets 10 lepers, 10 of them. And one of them seems a little more thankful than the other nine. And it's really interesting when you think about the lepers. My wife and I were over in Hawaii, and they said, over in that area, there's a leper colony. And in teaching medicine, humanity, and God, to medical students at Loma Linda. Uh, we look at Yancey in the book, the connection with God. And down in Louisiana, they have a leper colony. And lepers, it's, they're really something. But I, I want you to notice carefully this story that is so real, recorded for us by Dr. Luke. In Luke, the 17th chapter, 
verses 11 to 13. Notice what he records for us. Now it happened, as he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem, Jewish, that he passed through the midst of Samaria, Jew and Assyrian, giving us the Samaritans, oh, the cultures, how they can blend. And Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, they call it the circle. And then as he entered a certain village, and in the research, they had about 204 villages there. There he met 10 men who were lepers. Notice what Luke records, who stood afar off. When you had leprosy, you could not get close like we are. You had to stand afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. If you're a leper, you could not go to your home. You stayed away. And as I researched the background, their voices, they lifted them up. One writer said they had like a sound of wind going through lungs that were punctured. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. If they would try to turn a knob, they would look down and see a finger that had dropped off. They called him, and as he entered, he heard that sound, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Let's remember, our Lord is tender in mercy. His mercies are renewed every day to us, and that mercy he gives. But notice, his mercy, the lepers had many things in common. They were all afflicted with the same disease, scaly, losing fingers. Sometimes a nose would drop off. They walked a certain way. They were all dying. And we are all dying from the leprosy of sin. We're all dying from it for all, Paul says, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and we have. But there's a gift, and that gift is the gift of God. The wages, you work for them. You become an addict. You're afflicted with leprosy. Some writers say different things about it. But you work for wages, but God offers a gift that connection with Jesus Christ. Those who had no hope, he gave hope. And this means so much. But I want you to notice something carefully. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. Today's parlance or language, go show yourselves to the preachers. And so it was that they went. They were cleansed. Notice how they were healed, this connection with Christ. When someone was blind, Christ would take some dust and place it on the eyes. Sometimes when people were ill, he would touch them and they were healed. Notice, even his robe had a power where they touched the hem of his garment. The issue of blood stopped. But notice how he healed. Notice what he said. Go show yourselves to the priests. And they went. They were cleansed. He saw them. He had compassion. He looked upon them with compassion, and this meant much. But notice, 
And when they went, they were cleansed. He didn't touch. They didn't touch his garment. He says, go show yourselves. They had faith. And that faith was so vitally important. You see, that faith means F A I T H, forsaking all, I trust Him. That faith, they had it. They went. But notice, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. It was not now glorifying God. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Oh, my, the miracle of faith, the connection, faith, forsaking all. You depended on him. That made the difference in your experience. And so Jesus said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give joy except this foreigner? He has come, this foreigner, to give glory to God. And as you look carefully in healing, it's very interesting. The Greek word for salvation is doxa. Doxa, salvation. The word for healing, doxa, doxa, healed, made whole. No longer the voice, no longer the losing of limbs. He makes things new. So I would like to share with you today that we, that we today may have salvation and may not be thankful. That's why David was thankful to God. That's why young Daniel was thankful to God. That's why Paul was thankful to God. Look what they went through. Look at the trials that they suffered. And in verse 19, he said to him, Arise, go your way. You're forsaking all you trust him. That connection made you well. And it's real. It works. Those things written before time before our learning, and that one person was thankful. November's coming, quickly. Will you be thankful, not just for the meal on the table in front of you, will you be thankful for what God has done for you through that connection where he makes all things new? There was a person in the church where I pastored I won't tell you the city, nor will I give you the person's name. But they said, Pastor, you need to go over to this revival. They're having miracles take place there. And she explained one of the miracles. People have come there with decaying teeth, and this man will touch them. And after opening their mouths, they've all been filled with new fillings. Why don't you come down and see it? I says, well, no, I don't think so. Because when we have that connection with Jesus, he doesn't repair us. He makes us new. He won't give you fillings. He'll make you a new person. That leper was new. And we can thank God. He was thankful. And so let's remember it. We at LLBN, we are thankful for your prayers. We at LLBN, we are grateful for your contacts. We at LLBN, we are thankful 
that you can share the good news of God's thanksgiving and how he has been thankful to you, to me, and he continues that miracle today. Let us pray and thank you, God, for massaging our hearts, touching our minds, and we are thankful for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Uh, just come on and join us. And I'm so thankful for the message. I'm so thankful that we have a Savior that uh, will forgive us from any sin and all sin. And during this Thanksgiving period, I'm thankful for you for joining us for these great discussions uh, and great messages here in the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. And uh, Pastor Taylor, you've been sharing the message of Jesus' love for just a few years now. Has the message changed in that, uh, what is it, 20 or 30 years? Or how, how many years is it? It's that same old good news. The news old, well, that's past history. But it's the good news. It's current. And we find that God works in mysterious ways, wondrous ways. 2018, as he did back in the days when Jesus and the leper. So we can have salvation, not digressing, and go and never really thank God. And I found in over 50-something years in ministry now, that miracle still takes place, and he uses different avenues now. Look what we have where we are broadcasting around the world. Mm. Years ago, no. But it's that same good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he can do in their life. Well, Tim knows it's firsthand, don't you, Tim? Amen. Yes, Amen. sir, I do. And um, just to testify, you know, that God works the same now in 2018, as you said, as he did then. Um, you know, I was baptized here at Campus Hill Church in Loma Linda, and I've given my life to Christ, and it has never been the same since. And it makes a difference. And you see, it takes a surrender to do that. And you know, in the country like America, we don't like to talk about surrender. No. <laughs> that talks about defeat. <laughs> you see, but when you surrender, as you did, Tim, that's victory. Amen. Not defeat, you see. So Christ gives the victory. That leper who was thankful, who came back, but it's more than the victory. I mean, we're talking of eternal life here. I mean, get real. This life that we have is sin and sick at the same time. We are mired in it. We are fed it from our media. We are fed it from uh, our friends and neighbors. You know, they don't know any better. They're just living the world. I mean, what was it like for you before you knew Jesus? Before I knew Jesus, there was no hope. There was no hope of anything better than the temporal, the immediate, the right now. And since I've met Jesus Christ, I have a hope for better things in eternity. And you notice how it ties over the leper, homeless. Mm. Now you're new. You can go home. Hopeless. Now you've been with Jesus. Hope. Before rejected, mm. unclean, unclean, unclean. And now you're received. Amen. Jesus makes the difference. It happened then. It happens now. Look at my brother Tim. When he came in, he shook my hand. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and we talked. That's the connection that's so important. Amen. Mm. What about the old life? Has it ever called you back? You know, uh, the enemy is still at work. There are still temptations, there are still trials, there are still things that we have mm -hmm. to face, as all of us do, not just mm -hmm. addicts and alcoholics, but we all have our trials, we all have our temptations, and that's why it's so important that we stay connected to Christ. So you I'm going to ask Tim this question, because I know how you start your day, but how, is, how important is starting your day with Jesus every day to you? Well, you know, Paul tells us that we have to die to self daily. And so every morning I know that the first thing I have to do when I wake up is to pray and ask the Lord to order my steps 
and to guide me and to lead me and not my will, but thy will be done. And I do that every day. Anything to add, Lee? You know, that, that's so important, Tim. I, I don't know how many people I've said. In fact, recovery is lifelong. Never make promises, make choices. Because when people make promises and we all sin and you know, come short of the glory of God and, you know, Sometimes people relapse. It's not a choice, not something they choose necessarily, but they're in a you know, bad place to be in that. So if that ever happens and you're recovering, don't give up. Start again. Well, yeah, John talks about this. I mean, mm -hmm. Many places in the Bible, Proverbs, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when uh, Proverbs especially, you know, uh, a righteous man falls down and gets up how many times? Mm -hmm. Seven times, right? Oh, shit. And because seven, like you said, that's mm -hmm. that's an endless number. You can get up 177 times, and the Lord will be quick to for forgive you, even before your words leave your lips. The you know mm -hmm. the angels are retranslating and and it's a, it's a process. A, it's a process, and um, you know, with any sin, whether it's addiction or mm -hmm. pride, whatnot. It's all a process, and you know, it, uh, it's a struggle. Yeah, and the fallen man yeah. needs to go down once. He yeah. doesn't get up. Yeah. And perhaps in Tim's experience, I'm saved, that happened, notice with the lepers as they went. There's a constant growth and renewal because you've been with Jesus, and that makes the difference. Yes. Now you can go home and rejoice. So the leprosy is a symbol of what, as we wrap this uh, segment up? Sin, and all of us, sin. And we're all lepers. That's right. This is why Christ, Christ alone, can bring that healing. Loma Linda today, we use the language wholeness, wholeness, the whole person. And this is the real experience, and we must be thankful, even the Lord, recognizes that. In Luke 17, the doctor said, the saddest words of Jesus, where are the other nine? You may have salvation, but are you thankful? Mm. Mm. Anything to add, Bob? Forsaking all, I trust him. Very nice, doctor. I like that. Faith, because that's what a lot of this is about, too. Whether you're in recovery or have never abused any sort of substance, uh, the faith is important. Faith over jealousy, faith over pride, hmm. it all applies. Well, Bob, it's uh, just about time to enjoy uh, some relaxing music with uh, Michael. But before you do that, uh, tell us about the fall special that is coming up this uh, weekend, starting on Sunday. That's right. One more time, in case you have missed it, we will not be here next week. Well, Marlon will be here, but the rest of us will be taking the week off from Christian Connections as we spend here at LLBN uh, five evenings with Pastor John Bradshaw of It Is Written Ministries. Pastor Bradshaw will join Ganim Hanna and Marlon on stage. We'll have wonderful music too. And uh, he will also be speaking, talking about the righteousness of Christ. Now again, that starts Sunday, October 28th, 6 p.m. Pacific time and it'll run through every night at the same time until Thursday, November 1st. And on Christian Connections, well, we'll be back on the following Tuesday, November 6th. Uh, in fact, we have uh, Amwad Waran of Pakistan Literature Ministries and also a good friend of LLBN, Wesley James. He will be speaking God's word. Yes. So I hope you'll join us uh, in two weeks on Christian Connections. Michael Klein is back for his final number, and it is very relaxing. It's, it's, it's one of my favorites. The Savior is waiting. Oh, how he wants to come in. Michael?
Thank you, Beautiful. Michael. Beautiful. Very relaxing. You were right about that, Marlon. And uh, I do appreciate, all of us here appreciate your being with us tonight. You're a regular here at LLVN, and we hope you'll be back soon. You know, something interesting, just out of fun, I guess, I went on to YouTube and I entered The Savior is Waiting. You know what the first video was that popped up? It was The Heritage Singers, who we run regularly here on LLVN. And ironically, it was a performance of that song that they did at the Loma Linda University Church, oh, about five years ago at Christmas time. And uh, check it out, but uh, it, it, it's beautiful music and you're a masterful guitarist. And I also want to give a special uh, plaudit to uh, the very fine young woman who accompanied you on your first song, uh, Rayanne Ferris. Rayanne was telling me before the show that uh, this was her first time on LLBN, and she's nodding her head in agreement. Yes, it is. Okay, Bob, <laughs> you have to bring her back. So we have to bring her back, yeah, and I hope you'll come back. I hope you'll yeah. like us. We certainly enjoyed you. You're very talented. Yeah. Thank you so much. Marlon? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we really appreciate uh, your, your, your thoughtful support uh, of this ministry. As we close out this year, uh, we're really counting on your prayers and uh, your uh, generosity to uh, bring uh, us up to speed uh, with all the programs that we have going here. So I want to thank you for your, uh, your your loyalty, your consistent giving to this ministry. I'm, my heart is just touched uh, because I know what it means uh, to have this message go out to people that haven't heard about Jesus or or have heard about Jesus and are now thinking about coming back. You're making the difference in those lives. You know, Michael is making the difference in those lives. Uh, Tim is an example of the difference made in those lives. And of course, our good friend uh, David uh, has been touched by Jesus in so many ways. You know the power of, your, of his healing. Uh, personally and, and uh, in your family. And you know the power of the message of Jesus Christ mm. that we try to, to deliver through LLBN. How important is that, doctor? Vitally important. For in him we live and we move. And we have our being. That's the power of the connection. That's what the gospel is all about. Amen. That, what do you think about uh, about the value of ministries like LLBN? Should we continue these ministries? How, how important it is to support these ministries? Absolutely. These ministries are so necessary. And as you said earlier, you know, my life has been touched by this ministry, by the ministry of DAP, and all of these Christian ministries. They are so important in saving lives and getting the gospel out to others. Mm -hmm. Lee, I know you had personal experiences and uh, testimonies. You know, I'm just amazed at the um, stability that Dr. Taylor's brought throughout his life. Uh, yeah. I've known Dr. Taylor for a number of years now. He's a solid rock. And I know he stands on the solid rock, too. Yeah. He never changes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a rock does. It's solid. Bob, t tell us about the value and importance of of supporting in the LLBN ministry. Well, we count on you, our viewers, to help us, and especially at this time of year, as we get toward the end of the year, and this is a time when, you know, traditionally you kind of have to watch your pennies, but we also know that people can be very generous, and we hope that you'll remember LLBN, both financially but also in your prayers. Our, our ministry is growing and we're trying to bring more special programs like the one we have coming up uh, next week at this time with Pastor John Bradshaw, a special guest. So we appreciate and value all that you do. Uh, can I go into the different ways to reach us here? Oh, yeah, I got about 30 sure. seconds. First, next week, well, it won't be Christian Connections, but it will be John Bradshaw and John Bradshaw. I think you've gotten the message. And we are working on <laughs> musical selections. Uh, I know you won't be disappointed. We have a wonderful uh, array of individuals who we can count on. Mm. You know, there's that old saying, uh, you can run, but you can't hide. 
Uh, we don't want to hide at LOBN. We want to hear from you. You can write to us uh, at our post office box address, or if you're more internet savvy, you can contact us at www.llbn.tv. That's .tv. Uh, also, we, um, our clicker, here we go. We have a toll-free phone number, which you can call for prayer, and we will pray with you over the phone. If you do want to make a donation, we have that option too. But this is a prayer line and to speak with an LLBN representative. We're also on our YouTube channel, live streaming, and our mobile apps, uh, both for the Apple platform as well as Android. Marlon, final words? Thank you, Bob. This is a very vital, important information. Hope you wrote it down. If not, go to LLBN.tv and uh, check it out. Well, see you uh, with our fall special with John Bradshaw of It Is Written uh, next time on Christian Connections. Mm -hmm.